Hello, this is Mr. Mac. Uh, this is the concept video on sets, number sets, and properties of the real numbers. First of all, let's talk about the word set. A set is a collection of objects that is well-defined. What well-defined means is that you can tell what is in the set and what isn't in the set. If I were to talk about the set of all chairs in this room, then if I were to show you an object, you should be able to tell whether or not it is in this set. If I were to show you um, for example, an eraser from the blackboard. That would obviously not be in the set, but if I were to pick up one of the chairs in the room and show that to you, you would say, yes, that's in the set. The important thing about a set is that you can tell what is in it and what is not in that. Now, in mathematics, we use sets of numbers. And as you'll notice, since the fundamental concept of a set is to be able to tell what's in it and what's not in it, it's important for you to be able to tell which numbers are in a set of numbers and which numbers aren't. So it's very important to know the names of the basic sets of numbers. We start with a set of natural numbers. Um, they're pretty easy to remember because they are very natural. That's the set of numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, dot, dot, dot. Now the dot, dot, dot means and so on and so forth. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and so on. If we kept going, sooner or later we would actually get to a million because a million is in that set. But we would never get to one half. One half is not in this set. It is also, there's another name for the set of natural numbers. Since this is the set that we use, of numbers that we use to count with, sometimes they're called the counting numbers. We usually de uh, delineate the set by using the, the capital N as the letter for the natural numbers. The next set of numbers that you need to know is the set of whole numbers. Now, the set of whole numbers is very much like the set of natural numbers, and uh, the only difference is that we also put in 0. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, dot, 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 in the set of whole numbers. One additional element makes it the set of whole numbers. And again, we use usually the capital W to name the set of whole numbers. The next set that we come to is the set of integers. Usually we use the capital Z to stand for integers. I've been told that that's because the name for the integers in German begins with a Z, but I don't really know. Um, if you're interested, you could Google that. But the set of integers includes the negatives of the natural numbers. So we have a set dot, 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 negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Notice the integers also do have 0 in them. But there's no decimal or fractional part in the integers. Many times also students will say, do you want a whole number when they actually mean, do you want an integer? So be careful about mixing those two names up. The next set of numbers is the set of rational numbers. And this set is difficult to just list in order. Um, so a lot of times we give a definition for this one where we say all fractions with numerator and denominator
as integers. So in other words, if you can express any number as a fraction where the numerator and denominator are both integers, then it's a rational number. We usually use the capital letter Q to stand for the rational numbers. Now, Q is a quotient, or the quotient, word quotient begins with Q, and notice that fractions are a division problem or a quotient. So that's why we use Q for that. Now, a number like 1.5 over 7 is a rational number because it can be expressed as 3 over 14, and 3 and 14 are integers. It is a fraction. So when we say, is this number rational, it doesn't have to be expressed as a ratio of two integers, but it has to be such that you can rewrite it so that it, it so that it is expressed as the ratio of two integers. Now we come to a strange set uh, called the irrational numbers. Now none of the numbers above are irrational. Now the irrational numbers are the numbers, uh, the best way to say this, it's the set of numbers whose decimal expansion neither terminates or repeats with a specific period. Now, numbers like the square root of 2 and pi are irrational because they have decimals that go on and on forever without stopping or repeating in a specific period. Numbers like one-third, which is 0.333 with the threes repeating, are not irrational because this one repeats with a specific period. In other words, every one digit, this digit repeats. One-seventh is rational. It's not irrational. And one-seventh decimal is 0.142857. One-four-two-eight-five-seven. One, four, two, eight, five, seven. One, four, two, eight, five, seven. In other words, one-four-two-eight-five-seven repeats over and over and over again ad infinitum ad nauseum. So these two numbers are not irrational. They are rational. No, well, notice on the left-hand side, you have the ratio of integers. So they would have to be rational. But all rational numbers, decimals, either stop, like 1 half is 0.5, or they repeat with a specific period, like 1 third and 1 seventh. But numbers whose decimals go on and on forever without terminating or repeating are called irrational. Now what we do is we say we're going to add the irrational numbers to the rational numbers, and when we do, we get the real numbers. The reals are the set of rationals, um, rational numbers now we need to also talk about the properties of the real numbers now what we're talking about now is we've got the set of real numbers and we have two operations we have addition and we have multiplication and what we want to know is what is true of numbers uh, our basic assumptions what is true of numbers when we add them or multiply them together? Well, first of all, the real numbers are closed under addition and multiplication. In other words, if you add 